Hey everyone, Kachi Investor back to another video for today. So when we think about NVIDIA, especially more recently, we have to think about AI, machine learning, large language models like ChatGPT, etc. But, but before all the hype, NVIDIA already had and has a tremendous business, right? We've talked about this on this channel a lot of times. So let me remind you of a couple of things and add some more information. I'm specifically going to talk about cloud gaming, gaming, and Omniverse and subscription. Surprise, surprise, right? We're not going to talk about ChatGPT or anything else. But to reach the $1 trillion goal that NVIDIA themselves, not me, NVIDIA themselves have laid out, a lot of things need to happen. Now, if you don't believe me or you don't think this $1 trillion goal exists, it will pop up on the screen right here. This comes from NVIDIA directly. Now, of course, we first have to talk about GeForce Now, the cloud gaming aspect of NVIDIA. So this is straight from the earnings call. They say here, the GeForce Now cloud gaming service continue to expand in multiple dimensions, users, titles, and performance. It now has more than 25 million members in over 100 countries. Remember that number. They also said they agreed to a 10-year partnership to bring GeForce Now Microsoft's lineup of Xbox PC games, which includes blockbusters like Minecraft, Halo, and Flight Simulator. And upon the close of Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, which, again, remains to be seen what happens with that, it will add titles like Call of Duty and Overwatch. Now, 25 million members. Why is that important? Well, because according to NewZoo, cloud gaming market sizing and forecast, in our most likely scenario, we forecast 31.7 million paying users of cloud gaming services by the end of 2022. So NVIDIA basically has already around 80% of that. And the spending, a combined $2.4 billion on cloud gaming services and game stream via cloud. So if you want to take 80% of 2.4 billion, you already get a sense of what number you can come out with. But let's let's be very, very conservative. Let's say they have 80% of the paying users of cloud gaming, but only, let's say, 50% of spending, right? Let's be conservative, so that's $1.2 billion. Okay, we got some numbers right now. And now, if we project ourselves to 2024, we can see that the cloud gaming market is projected to reach 6.2 three billion dollars in revenue so again let's take 50 percent of that suddenly what happens 3x the revenue for nvidia let's go one step further shall we so apparently here according to persistence market research cloud gaming market size worth 42.35 billion dollars and growing at a kager of 41.7 percent by 2032 so let's take again 50% of the market there. What do we get? $21 billion. Not too bad. No, I know, I know. As the market grows, other companies will enter the market, more competition, so maybe even 50% is a bit much. Fine, I agree. But since right now Nvidia already has 80% of users in that market, I think it's safe to assume that in the future they still have the majority or a lead in market share overall. So, of course, I took those numbers, I took 50%, makes it also easier to understand, to calculate, to visualize those numbers. You can play around with those numbers, but the reality is the opportunity is there. The opportunity is huge. And this is just one segment of the whole gaming industry, right? Just wanted to put this out there. Now, if you enjoy these type of videos, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you have not. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Much appreciated. All right, now let's talk about the second part of this video, which is obviously the $1 trillion goal. And it looks like this. So of course, taking all of this into consideration, we've talked about this, this before, this includes what they think will be a significant expansion of its software business in which it would sell software tools for AI. Now, if we look at the $1 trillion opportunity here, you can see there is $100 billion opportunity in gaming, which we've talked a little bit about at the start of this video. There is $300 billion in chips and systems. Makes sense. 
Then NVIDIA's AI Enterprise Software, that's a $150 billion opportunity. Omniverse Enterprise Software, $150 billion as well. And then Automotive, $300 billion there. Now, with regards to Omniverse, again, like I said many times, my favorite part of this business. Now, we've talked about this in the past on this channel, but let me remind you the first three steps. So they're just major three steps when it comes to Omniverse that Jensen announced. So first, the Omniverse Nucleus, a database engine that connects users and enables the interchange of 3D assets and scene descriptions. Inside the shared virtual space, which again, I think we're going towards that direction, multiple designers can collaboratively create a scene by transmitting and receiving universal scene description, USD, snippets. The second part of the Omniverse is the composition, rendering and animation engine, the simulation basically of the virtual world. And then the last one, the third part, is NVIDIA Cloud XR, a sort of Stargate, let's say, that allows users to use virtual reality to teleport into the Omniverse and AI to use augmented reality to teleport out. Now, these applications for Omniverse seems varied and endless, from video games creations to factory and building design to creating a digital twin of the entire planet, which, by the way, Twin Earth is currently doing. Now, of course, for a lot of these things to actually exist or to be fully operational, we need to go a couple of steps ahead when it comes to computing power. Right now, it is just not possible to create a game like, let's say, Call of Duty Warzone in a virtual world. It just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't work, right? You cannot play Warzone. The whole game, the whole computing power cannot be put in a headset on your head. The same thing could be said with creating a digital twin of the entire planet with as much detail as you want in super high quality. Right now, it's just not possible. You can start by doing what is possible today, but it will take a long, long time until we reach I don't know, peak computing power when it comes to the next gen of hardware, let's say, when it comes to VR headsets or AR headsets or maybe even computers, right? The computer we have today can do so much more than what it could do 20 years ago. And who knows what it could do 10 years in the future? Now, this is just Omniverse. Well, I say just Omniverse, but as you've seen, the possibilities here seems endless. But when you talk about automotive, automotive, they say this is a $300 billion opportunity for them. Now, we've talked about Tesla and the opportunity of FSD there, but it's just not only FSD. Of course, NVIDIA has NVIDIA Drive, and it goes into cars such as Mercedes-Benz, etc., BMW, I believe, as well, or I think it will come out 2024, 2025. Anyways, it's not just FSD. It's also the chips that go into the car. It's obviously software that have to operate the car. Whether you want to be a robo-taxi or not remains to be seen. But the opportunity is there. A lot of cars, well, most of the cars will just become computer on wheels. It's just the way this is going to work. Of course, not all cars will be Tesla built. Not all cars will have NVIDIA software and hardware in it. But a lot of them will have. And that's why the opportunity is there. $300 billion worth of it. So again, of course, right now the hype is around LLMs, ChatGPT, AI, machine learning, etc., right? And maybe a lot of people don't understand why the stock is so expensive because, let's face it, it is very, very expensive. You are paying a big premium when buying NVIDIA. But I hope that my little explanation here and showing you some facts here, some numbers, some projections with some business segments, some industries that NVIDIA is already operating in right now and growing pretty fast, being a market leader in many of those industries... I think you can start to understand why people are paying such a high premium for this company. Because if, let's say, they do reach that goal, I mean, how much will the shares be worth? Probably a lot more. And let's be even very, very conservative and take again a 50% cut there. $500 billion opportunity. I mean, it's again much more than what they're generating right now. So, of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Have you been thinking about this, the automotive, the gaming, Omniverse, obviously the chips, data sensors, etc. Have you been thinking about the opportunity there? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.